let's rank some hand traps for this duelist cup meta. If you haven't seen my tier list video for the duelist cup format, where I went and made this tier list, go check that out and the reason behind it. But I'm gonna base off the hand trap rankings roughly according to how I rank decks here. As you can see, the top five decks: Dragon Link, uh, Vanquish Soul, Lab, Early Math Mech. Then you have the tier two stuff, and then and then everything rogue and below. So first off, this is the Master Hand Trap tier list. We're just it's, this will this will never not change. That this will always be like this until the end of dawn, until Master Duel bans this card. Not, nothing really more to discuss here. Next is uh, Ash. So. Ash is still probably, if, and only for the fact that Ash is the only hand trap that can actually stop Maxi, like that alone probably justifies it being in great tier by itself. Just because so many decks are pulled by Maxi, and that Ash being the best and most common out to it, you know, that's, if, if it was a vanilla, if it literally had no other effect, and it was just like, a cross out from the hand for Maxi, it would still probably see play. That's how you know, game warping this card right here is, but you already knew that. And Ash isn't just an anti Maxi card, it has real text on it, real hand trap application. Well, it's rarely ever the best card against most matchups, with the exception of Lab and Branded, where it could actually possibly just solo a game by itself. And, you know, those are two tier 1 slash tier 2 decks. It it's versatile, it's never bad against any deck. Like, there's no deck where Ash is just terrible against. It, you'll always guarantee to get value out of it one way or the other, the other, whereas a lot of other hand traps, if you face like the wrong matchup, it might basically just be a dead card in hand, that Ash will never be dead. And the fact that, you know, it's also a tuner, and some decks can take advantage of the fact that it is a level 3 tuner, like, like, <clears throat> cashier. So, yeah, it's just extremely versatile, and it, it counters the best card in the game. And, you know, not, not much more to say. You're, you're never going to be upset for putting Ash in your deck. And you're never going to be upset when you draw Ash versus any mashups. Uh, next, how do we... Which hand do I want to cover next? Okay, so Infirm is probably the next best one, the next hand trap people think about. It's... It... it you, there could be argued that there were formats where Infirm is more impactful than Ash was just as a hand trap. It's just you, you wouldn't put it above Ash because the Infirm doesn't handle Maxi. And it's... Against a lot of matchups, Infirm is actually better than, than Ash is. Such as, uh, if your opponent's still on Pearly, for example, provided they're not playing the Pearly Street or they didn't open Pearly Street. Like, uh, Ash Infirming... The black cat is so much is more impactful than like ashing the my and the my friend because usually what happens with ash in that matchup is you will black cat search my friend and you would ash them the my friend search but then the, the black cat on the field still can use its effect if they hard drew another uh pearly spell or i mean they also do ash as my friend that way too and my friend being on the field means it's really hard to deal with the pearly xds if they get to one because they'll just plus off their own monster dying. Whereas Infirm shuts down the, the main choke point of that deck. And it's unlike every other hand trap, this this Infirm is the only one that does not play into tactics or thrust, which admittedly are seeing less play than they were when they first came out like a couple like basically a month ago. But that that's still Rel a relevant advantage and you know with stuff like diameter going to one versus math mech infirm also gets better because now they're less likely to just hard open the diameter so infirming the allen version is the does legitimately do some damage to their, to their combo it cuts them off of a body and requires them to waste a terahertz uh send on the diameter itself if they even get that far and yeah, the, the thing is with Imperm and Ash is, again, except against the two matches where Ash is good against, these cards are not, are not likely going to end an entire deck's turn by itself. 
unlike Max Maxi. So like if if we're being honest, Maxi should be in a tier by itself, and these two should be below here just to just just to signify just the power level difference between these two. But uh, with only five tiers left, like just just imagine there's like like five cards of gap between Maxi and Ash Blossom and so on. Uh, next one, I guess since we talked about Imperm, we could talk about Valor. So, so there's a lot of reasons why Valor is less good than Imperm. Again, but playing around Thrust and Talents, that's one thing. One, it's also only playable in the main phase, which is actually a very big deal this meta because of Pearly being able to activate in the draw phase, which Pearly will do that anyways to play around Droll if they have the opportunity to. But by playing around Droll, they also play around Valor. Which is really annoying if you're running on Valor. Also against stuff like, let's say, Branded. The Branded opening, again, can be used in the draw phase. So that also dodges Valor. And Valor can be called by the Grave, whereas Imperm cannot. And then there's a non-zero amount of decks that are playing Shifter right now. Like like here, here. I had a... <laughs> Vaylader is also bad against stun for the reason that it can't shut down any potential threats in the back row, but that that's not maybe the most relevant downside. But yeah, Max Vaylader cannot activate on the shifter, sure, which is annoying against those decks. And then versus Vanquish Soul, so like the best way to use Imperm against Vanquish Soul is to just hold it on your turn and then Imperm to rock in a draw phase, so they can't special summon anything to your side of the field. Whereas Valor, you you can't you can't wait until your turn because you can't use Valor on your turn, so you have to just hit the rock of the Vanquisher on their turn and hopefully they don't have the proper piece already in hand. Which is uh there's a higher chance for them to play through a Valor easily than to play through an imp, let's just say that. So Well in the instances where Imperm is good, most of the time Valor will be almost as good, but there are like a lot of scenarios where Valor is is not as good. Again, there's a, some advantages of Valor in that it's it is a light monster, so decks like Dragon Link and Chaos Ruler and that play Chaos Ruler have advantage of that. It makes Bish Shields live, although that could be a double-edged sword because playing Valor also gives your opponent real Bish Shield Father instead of having to advance your own cards. But usually, it's that's not the if they had Bish Shields, they they would be able to take advantage of whether you Valor them or not. So yeah, and. Mourner is so before. Let's get let's get rid of like go through all three effect negation hand traps right away. So Mourner last month the last Duelist Cup, I rated Mourner as better than Valor. Why? Because I projected that the best decks would be some form of Kashtiro and Pearly at the very least. And Mourner I like a lot better versus Kashtiro than Valor. You know. Uh, one of the aforementioned reasons was was uh, D Shifter itself, Valor not being able to activate, and then also Kashira being a meta deck meant that you were, you would rather have Mourner in your deck than Valor because Mourner you can still use under your own Arise Heart or under opposing Arise Hearts, whereas if you make a Rise Heart, this Valor is no longer uh, live. And then you know Valor Mourner being a level three tuner in Kashira helped make Baron, which is a uh, Probably a more desirable play than normal something Valor to make Omega. But again, with Cash not being as common, that's point in favor is not as relevant. And then there, and then the other matchup again was Pearly because you can activate Mortar in the draw phase where people would activate their quickly spells if they could to play around Droll. Uh, that that plays into more and that allows you to Mortar their stuff in the draw phase. So that was a relevant thing. And then with Branded making a comeback, possibly with the new set. You can mortar the brand opening in the draw phase. There's not really a lot of things you can mortar on your turn to gain value, although, like for example, you, you could do so against Vanquish Souls, but that's risky because mortar is a uh, on summon. You have to use an on summon, so that just plays into their like Caesar values and their and their hungry or not, <laughs> their their heavy border, not not their hungry. Order. That's a different order. Yeah, and the, if Vanquish Show is a top matchup, and Valor is is better than Mourner, even though Vanquish Show does run, uh, what's it called, Shifter. So sometimes Valor isn't live, but I mean Mourner, you have it's so risky to Mourner against Vanquish Show because you can't 
you can't Mourner their rock. Like, that's the big interaction. Mourner does not work against rock because you have to do it on summon and they can just chain the rock of Anguisher and then it's just not a viable target. So then you have to pray that they don't have hen like Heavy Borger or Caesar Valius. And if they do, and your only way to hit hit that, hit their like Rosin is with Mourner, then you're, you're getting blown out. And you can't really play around that because of the way Mourner works. So if if Vanguard Soldiers is expected to be a more common matchup than Cashier, for example, then I could see Mourner or being put below Valor. Mourner is still solid. And a lot of times, Mourner and Valor are going to be interchangeable. But yeah, and people are more likely to have Valor than Mourner because they're both URs, and Valor has been historically been more versatile than Mourner. So you know, if that's if that's a reason for it. And uh, next up, uh, let's cover uh, Bell and Crow. So these are sort of similar looking hand traps in that they both target the grave, although their applications are a little different in that Crow is actually a hand trap that's good against Pearly. You can hand trap the uh, delicious memory and hand trap their quick play spell in the grave, chain it to their Blackhead activation, then that would make their Blackhead resolve Veld effect. And that is usually enough to also prevent them from making Nora, especially if you hit the Delicious Memory. That's, they lose the card to attach to it and they lose their Delicious Memory. They have to. They're, they're usually not making a relevant enough board after uh, you hit the Crow on the right spot. And then Crow, along with Bell, has the benefit of being one of the hand traps that's actually good against Math Mech. So like the problem with math mech, whoops, the that's the wrong tab. The problem with math mech is circular. When you when the math mech opens circular, it's almost pointless to hand trap them with one of these these three hand trap these four hand traps because there's they're always no matter what you hand trap, they're ninety nine percent of the time still going to end on super factorial terahertz with a diameter engrave. Like this is. It's just not enough. The only time you would get value out of hand trapping math mech is if they don't open circular and you astro mining and or small world and then they they have to hard commit like they don't actually have a starter. That's the one time where like Ash would be like good against math mech, but otherwise it's just not reliable enough to hand trap anything after they summon circular already. But Crow and Bell at least they hit the super factorial. The super factorial is like the main thing you want to hit versus Mathman because that alone is three interruptions. It kills two of your cards, one in hand, one on the field usually, and it negates another card in your hand. Or it, it, it has it gives you them another on negate during your turn. And that's usually what if it resolves, the game's usually over. So Bell and Mourner are like two generic hand traps that hit those. That that hits super factorial and it beats Terahertz too, because Terahertz beats Call by the Grave just by sending the save worm to negate it. Whereas these are monster effects, so they So they play around the save worm and Crow is slightly better than uh Bell since if they're on conflict, then unfortunately Bell loses the conflict. Whereas Crow, if you see that they search conflict and they telegraph it, you just crow the diameter out of the grave on the end phase. Much like you would do with Abyssal, which we'll we will talk to later. And the advantages of Crow and Bell versus, say, Bistios, which are similarly, like, probably better against Math Mech, is again the other matchups. Whereas, uh, the Bistios themselves are not, they don't have as much value outside of Math Mech, outside of the Math Mech matchup because they can only hit the monsters. Whereas, Bell and Crow hit additional other cards in other decks. Such as uh, again the hitting the the quickly probably spells out the grave and Bell is a uh, uh, hits labyrinth the big welcome labyrinth that's a that's a huge deal that's much more impactful than bestialing away like a furniture after they've already searched the labyrinth with it like, that's not the, the biggest deal and whether Bell or Crow is the better one. I think it largely depends on what you think is going to be the better deck between Pearly and Labyrinth. Uh, yeah, if you think Pearly is going to be better, then Crow is going to be better than than Bell, and if you think Lab is better than Pearly, then 
probably you probably value Bell over Crow. And yeah, combined with also being good in the math mag matchup, I think that's enough coverage to be considered decent. And they're not dead cards versus the other matchups too, such as such as uh, branded and dragons. It has about as so much impact as the abyssio uh, would against those matchups too. And speaking of bestials, so bestials, I still think bestials are worse than Bell and Crow, unless you're unless you're playing a deck where that uses bestials an actual engine like branded or D Link. I think other decks should probably. I I prefer running Bell or Crow over the bestials again because Bell, for the uh, being a blowout versus the lab matchup and Crow being a blowout versus the poorly matchup, whereas the Bistios are only really a blowout versus the math mech match matchup, and then they're, it's like average against other decks. Because again, versus lab, you, c you can't hit, you, ha you can only really target the furniture, which is less impactful than just negating the big welcome. Again, Pearly can't hit the quick play spells against Vanquish Souls. The Vanquish Souls are non light and dark attributes, so you actually can't shield them any away any of them if they try to hit them, ride them with continue or rock. And it's only marginally better than Crow and Bell are against matchups like Dragon Link and Branded, since they both effectively they do the same form of disruption. It's just that the Bishios get you a body on field, which is sometimes better. Although I actually like Crow better against uh, Branded than Bishios, which is uh, kind of weird to say. But because in Master Duel, Branded Fusion is limited to one, there's a lot of lines where Branded will have to Retribution back their Branded Fusion in order to play. And the fact that you can just randomly Crow their Retribution target is. which can be like a brand fusion it's like a, actually a huge deal and you can just stop them completely and not have to worry about the the mini game of whether they have an additional alabaster in hand or whatnot and also like randomly crow also doesn't lose the branded retribution that's set since it doesn't special summon but that that's less relevant it's more the retribution add back branded fusion play that crow hits that magna but miss or not magna but specifically but vicious miss out on uh, yeah, but again, if you're playing a deck that, you know, brand, like Branded or Dragon Link, it is worth running Bishos because they do help your engine too, and they're not god awful. There is at least one matchup that they're great against in Math Mech, and a few more that they're okay against, like uh, Branded and, and D Link. Uh, Contact C, okay, so <laughs> Contact C, this was a relic from the last DC Cup. Where Pearly was by far the best deck, and Mac and Contact C was like an almost an FTK versus Pearly. So yeah, that's that's true. That that's not the case anymore. Pearly is no, I don't think Pearly is no longer the best deck anymore. It's definitely not going to be the see the most play. I would I would advise against playing this because if you look at here over here, I, I think it's actually just terrible against every other deck here that's not Pearly or possibly possibly Cash Cashira. Like even Branded, you would think. Okay, they can't fuse anything. Well, if Brandon, say, runs Sprint, they can actually fuse the Contact C <laughs> into the Sprint. Which, again, it, it is not the best way they can go for, but they do have a way to out it. And then the Cybers decks, because there's this monster called Transco Talker that doesn't actually take Cybers monsters to make. It just takes Effect monsters, which Max Contact C is one, so that does not really help hinder them. Against Dragon Link, you know, the... They don't have to go for Romulus immediately. They they have other links they can go into to link off the contact C. It's just, and they do play IP masquerade as well. So sometimes it doesn't literally does not do anything. Yeah, this is uh, I, I'm playing this in here now. Do do not ex play this expecting it to be uh <laughs> impactful like eight or ten like eight out of ten of your games because that's that's not this ain't last easy cup. This isn't like a probably by far the best deck format anymore. Uh, Chaos Hunter. Okay, so Chaos Hunter is mainly this is just a way to counter Dragon Link. I think Chaos Hunter may be the best, one one of the better single hand traps versus Dragon Link because you summon it and then they can't banish monsters, which means they don't have Bishios, they can't summon the baby dragons. They obviously that means they can't get value off regain. They can't banish for Chaos Space and Grave. 
they they can't revive chaos rulers it's actually uh, like a quite a big deal it shuts off quite a few number of uh extenders in their deck so it's not bad there the, the problem is it's quite bad against literally every other deck so this this is like the contact c problem except it's even worse because <laughs> It's not as good versus Dragon Link as Connex Eos versus Pearly, so this is a. Uh, it's it's funny. It's in, it's interesting tech, but I, nah, I I don't think it's it's worth discarding for. If you want to play a kind of track that's good versus dragons, play Droll. Droll is much better better than Chaos Thunder because it actually works against decks that aren't dragons. And in fact, it's so good that I'm considering putting it up here, even though Droll is not good against every matchup, so maybe it's uh, a bit premature. It is good against the best deck in the format, which is Dragon Link. It's probably the single best hand trap you can run versus Dragon Link that's like besides Shifter, and we all know that not every deck can run Shifter. So Droll's good there. The problem is Droll's not very good against Vanquish Soul or, or Labyrinth. It's good against Pearly and it's good against Math deck. So three of the top five decks Droll is good against. It's, it's hit or miss against against rogue meta but the fact that it hit it hits more than misses and anytime droll hits more than misses it's a good card because the next where it does hit it's like turn endingly good so that you'll take it being weaker in some matches because it's just such a blowout against against the decks it's good against which also happen to be some of the, among the best decks in the game like even math mech right Droll does more than any single hand trap versus an open hard open circular. Because they will search super factorial, yes. But the, when you draw them there, that cuts them off diameter and it cuts them off of heat soul draw. So they're actually losing you're actually uh they're losing more cards during their turn with because of Droll than they are from any like Valor, Ash, or Infirm. And obviously against Pearly, you know, if Pearly does not play around Droll, then they you know their turn also ends. And Manadium, Rika, all these, all these scary combo decks that you see in tier two, they also get hit quite decently hard by Droll with seven of Live Twin Sprite, which is not really a combo deck to be fair. So I guess that I shouldn't include it with them. And Flu, I mean, just the fact that Droll is in the meta makes just Flu so unappealing to play. Uh, sorry, that's it's a different pod for a different video, but yeah, Droll. Droll is pretty decent right now. And Gamma is also... So Gamma is is weird. If you're a deck that cannot take advantage of baiting out Ash and Maxi on your turn to summon Gamma on your turn, I will put Gamma here. Because half the reason Gamma is good is because it beats Ash and Maxi on your turn. So it's a pseudo out the Maxi that also blows the game out because you just get two bodies in the field. Like I would put it all the way here if you're a deck such as Dragon Link or your decks such as Tashira that plays triple planet Pathfinder, which, you know, you know, if if they want to ash your planet or ash Pathfinder, then they hit by gamma, the game also ends, because you omega them and hand loot them for another card before doing your combo. And yeah, it's just that not many decks can take advantage of gamma on their turn. So like it's obviously gamma is great as a Hand trap going second. I would say it's it's more impactful than any of these other hand traps going second. The uh, the only thing is like it's unlike these hand traps, they're a dead. It's a dead card going first if you don't have to play the bait maxi or ash blossom. So on average, I would even it out to be maybe somewhere around around here or here. Since uh, although to be fair. Evaluating Gamma is more like, if your deck can't take advantage of Gamma on your turn, you probably just wouldn't even run it. And if you do take advantage of, of Gamma on your turn, you would run it. So it's it's not like it's not like it's ever going to be in this middle range where it's somewhat good. It's always, always going to be great or it's going to be average and you probably don't consider it. So, so yeah, just keep in mind, this is not the true range for Gamma. This is, the, this is like a medium or like an average outcome. But it's uh, deck dependent whether how good Gamma is. So it, it, actually, let me just evaluate it like this. I will evaluate it in its best terms and like the decks that actually can play Gamma, that makes more sense. Decks that actually can play Gamma should probably run Gamma. It's, it's really good. Uh, Lanciads. 
it's like worse Chaos Hunter, I guess. Is there a matchup it hits besides dragons? Uh, maybe cast Hero like a third of the time. Like, it's not even... A Veiling uh, the Unicorn, or like just Veiling the Rhystart is much better versus cast Hero than praying that Lancia will somehow cut off the Rhystart too. Because that's the main thing you're hitting, trying to hit with uh, Lancia versus cast Hero is, is the Rhystart. If they can't do the rice art, then they can make a rice art under insurance. So that's the main thing. But like, I, I mean, Valor and Interim, they're just more consistent on that than Lancia. And Lancia is not good against literally any other deck I see here. I don't, I don't think. Uh, flu. Okay, yeah, it's good against Flu. <laughs> Damn, man. You really want to want to hit that that rogue, that like below rogue tier matchup. And it's it's worse than Chaos Hunter versus uh dragons as well since it's it's only for one turn you know if chaos hunter passes your turn they also can't bishop you when you control chaos hunter whereas uh, the, if it passes back to you then suddenly they can still bishop you and do all their stuff and plus off regain after the landscape wears off so it's, it's gonna be a no for me dog uh i okay for okay let's let's talk shifter since we talked gamma shifter i also think should be here obviously this only applies for decks that can run shifter so Maybe so Vanquish Soul, Kashira, and uh fucking we're, yeah, we're talking a lot about flu this year for some reason, but yeah, against as you can tell, there's not many decks that can run Shifter, which means that Shifter is a good card, because that means it hits every other deck pretty hard. So if your deck can't play Shifter, I will recommend you play Shifter. Zoo. Zoo there there's there's the real deck that plays Shifter. For, for, forget the, this nonsense. It's it's a zoo that can run shifter. And Nibiru. Okay, so Nibiru. It's a it's a weird card. It's there's some matches where Nibiru it just feels so bad against. You know, like Labyrinth, Pearly. It, it is the fact that the Nibiru against Pearly, it's like bait because you say they'll play into it, right? Yes. But they have a my friend up, and then when you Nibiru them. They get to add three quick play spells back from their grave. So it's like, it's not really the most impactful thing. You might be able to stop them from Nora if you drop them at the right time, like after they make a plump. That's, but then if they lead with plump, then there's a chance they don't even play into Nibiru in the first place. It's just not really that great against Pearly. And then it's, you know, the, against Math Mech, you can stop the Terahertz, but you still lose to the Super Factorial if you can't prevent the Super Factorial. And the fact that, the, that it's in the back means. Unlike the other decks, Nibiru can't bait out their interruption because you can't threaten it in battle phase because you can't kill a trap card in battle phase. That's why I've always I've never been a fan of Nibiru in the math deck match matchup. And against Kashira, it's great, yeah. But against Dragon Link, it depends on the player. If it's a mediocre Dragon Link player, you can, you can hit Nibiru. But if this is for Duelist Cup, right, and we're assuming good players in stage two, and if Nibiru is popular and in the meta, then Players, good dragon players will play around the Biru and make it literally a useless card. Like it, it's actually against a good dealing player, it's detrimental to the Biru them. They will literally end on a better board after you Biru them than if you don't Biru them. Like that, that's the biggest bait as a dragon link player because you you Biru their spheres and then they have regain on the fields. So they just get two bodies back for free after you Biru them. Like it's like. <laughs> You play against Trish. This this is a basically a dead card versus dragon. So uh, yeah, it's just it's just hit or miss like troll, but in the opposite sense in that there's it's there's more decks that don't care about Nibiru than there are that get FTK by Nibiru. Since there's I can really only think of Kashira that gets FTK by Nibiru, and every other deck is like varying degrees of how good it is, and usually it's not. Against like you know sprite variants, it's never gonna do anything versus sprite versus itself. You need to pair with another hand trap. So it's, I would put it as, like maybe on the same tier as as uh, bestial since the decks where bestials are good against, I think are gonna be more common than the decks in the biru is great against. Since again, best matchup for the biru is Kashira, and best matchup for bestials are math neck. I think math neck is gonna be more common than the Kashira, so. By that logic, Bishio is probably better than, probably gonna on average 
gets you more value than Nibiru will. And Bestials, like... Again, Bestials aren't completely dead against other matchups, unlike Nibiru. Like, if you play against a matchup where Nibiru is bad against, like Labyrinth, it is actually just a dead card in hand. Whereas, you can still do something with Bestials in those matchups, at least. At least it's a body, and at least you can hit some semi-important card, like a piece of furniture. Uh, Phantasmic. Uh, yeah, these are these are. I think these are only here because they they're somewhat anti Dragon Link card. But this isn't even anti Dragon Link. It's just like this is just kind of mid. You you wouldn't want Phantasmic against literally any other deck here. I don't think. How far do you have to go down before Phantasmic hits the deck? Uh, Life Twin Sprite. Sure, you have. Even that, you don't even no, not even Life Twin Sprite. They just make this card called Gigantic Sprite. And Phantasma is, is dead. Okay, so you gotta go all the way down to, <laughs> I guess, Attic Nister or like Rika. That down far the tier list before you get a, a card, you get a deck that Phantasma does anything against that's not Dragon. So this is probably maybe the worst card here. Maybe like this shouldn't even be here. I don't know why we're even talking about this. Ret retaliating C. Uh, I think this was just for Pearly, but it was like worse than Pearly. Like, Worse than contact C against Pearly since it's uh it goes away if they manage to kill it, so and they can negate it unlike unlike the contact C which gets some their field, so yeah, this is also funnily enough it has some application against Dragon Link, although way less now than it did before because its main target was Quick Launch, which got semi limited, so that that hit just randomly made this card worse against Dragon Link too. The fact that there's maxi is not too relevant. Yeah, this is a. Uh, whoops. This is this is in the phantasmic here. This is this is in the, in the. This should, probably shouldn't be, even talked about, about here. Ghost Reaper. Uh, it's, it's, I I don't I, I feel like Ghost Reaper is pretty pretty mad to be honest. I. Uh, it's it's okay against Dragon. But here's the thing about Dragon Link. Like Dragon Link is another deck where, it's like. Math mech in that a single hand trap is really not going to do anything. Like if you open any one of these low impact hand traps, such as in Infirm, Ash, Valor, Mourner, Bell, Crow, Abyssio, or a, a Ghost Ogre, they're all going to do roughly the same thing, which is like not they're ne it's never going to end their turn. They're never going to die to just one hand trap unless their hand was literally just one starter and like four non engine. And this it's just against other matchups, Crow. Ghost Ogre is like we don't need to talk about Ghost Ogre versus Lab. That's that's a, that's a meme right there. Ghost Ogre versus Mathnek. That's also pretty mediocre. And like you could you will hit the Heat Soul so that the Heat Soul dies so that they only get one draw out of it instead of two. Like oh no no what a, what a, what a huge huge loss for the for that deck. Branded uh, no. Like Pearly is you would think it'd be good against Pearly, but. I've rarely ever resolved a good Ghost Ogre versus Pearly because of this one card called Pearly Happy Memory, which just protects you from Ghost Ogre and is chainable to the Ghost Ogre itself. So it's just you, you try to Ghost Ogre to my friend, and they just protect it anyway. So it, it really does not ever work out the way you want it to versus Pearly. And then the more you go down against Sprite, it doesn't again. You need to pair with another hand trap because they can just negate it with the red. It's yeah, this I struggle to find a matchup where like Ghost Ogre is, is insane against, and where it is significantly better than one of these hand drafts. Maybe there's a there's one interaction I'm missing somewhere. Oh yeah, Flu Under Ease. You can hit the Flu Under Ease map map with Ghost Ogre, and that that cuts off a normal summon. Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking fucking Flu, man. Yeah, uh, I I looked up Rock, rock on the Vanguard too. They can make multiple rocks a turn, so even if you go over to one rock, they can just make another rock. <laughs> so, yeah, this is uh, it's not a dead card against some matchups, but it's bad against most matchups, and it's average at best versus the matchups where it's not dead against this format. So yeah, Ghost Reaper, Winter Cherry. So I don't know how to rank this because I don't play a deck that can ever fit room for. Reaper. I'll say this right now, you can if you you cannot this format is too diverse to where you can't just throw in three cherries into like um like just a random meta deck 
right now and expect it to work. There's this meta is just way too diverse. There are way too many targets. You need like these like four alone just to buy like four different targets. You need extract space too just to be able to run cherries. So cherries already like you can't, even in cash tier like cash tier doesn't have the strictest extra requirement. Even cash tier can't fit in enough cherry targets to make it uh you know usable against I would say more than 50% of the meta. And that means it's limited to only certain decks, such as <laughs> Flu. Apparently, <laughs> you know, Flu is like a deck that can fit in cherries. You know, because it doesn't need its extra deck at all, and you can fit in like eight targets. Because that's that's how many targets you're gonna need for cherries to be effective this format, just eight targets. And because of that, you're playing a deck that most likely doesn't even like want to play cherry. Cherries. Like if you're playing stun, for example, I don't think stun wants to play cherries. I think it would rather just play more floodgates. So yeah, the the it, this is more of a case of too diverse of a format, so not enough decks that can real decks that can actually slot in the necessary slots for cherries. This isn't like a tier zero format, like you know, a, like the World Championship qualifier where you can we're only gonna play against three decks with extra that matter. Then you saw stuff like Sprite and Echo Scissors put in cherries. You're probably not gonna see at this this format. There's just there's just too many targets that you have to run in order to make sure he's live more than half the time. So, yeah, th there you have it. That's a, roughly about how I see this see this meta. I, again, with hand traps, it's weird because you only have so much non-engine slots. So for, you know, a lot of decks, they can only run up to 12, may maybe 15 hand traps at max. So, like, if you see it up here, the fact that these are all good, but it will be deck dependent because you can't fit every good, great hand trap or every good hand trap into your deck. It's just not enough room. So you're going to have to decide and pick and choose between uh, which matchups your deck struggles the most against. Like if you struggle against Labyrinth, maybe you can consider, so consider running more Bell. If you struggle against against drag, Dragons, consider Droll. If you struggle against uh, Pearly, consider Crow. If, you, uh, if you're struggling against Math Back, consider Crow, Bell. Magnuma, it's that, that's like that sort of decision making that you have to have when deciding what hand traps you want to put in your deck. And so now we've done the meta tier list, the, the best decks, and we've done ranked the hand traps for the Duelist Cup. Next time we're gonna look at the board breakers. And the, the board breakers, I believe, is gonna be the the uh, tier list that changes the most from the last DC Cup, which was just like like less than two months ago. Uh, but that's for next time.